All right, so um, I guess as I'm taking this apart, um, I did about 90% of this build last summer. Uh, the only things I recently added were the optical drive and the power buttons, or power button. So because of this, uh, a lot of the information about how I specifically approached this project uh, isn't super fresh in my mind. And that's why I'm sti uh, sticking to calling this a sort of pseudo tutorial instead of a straight up tutorial. I'll do my best to put resources in the description uh, to help you if you want to try and do this your own. And I'll be sticking to like a more general description about how I did this project. But yeah, I'm just gonna be keeping things kind of general. And if you have any questions, uh, you know, you can leave a comment. I'll do my best to answer it. But yeah, just wanted to sort of clarify a little bit about that. So now that we have sort of all the front facing components outside of the um, chassis, you might be able to see how few of the original 2006 Max components are uh, actually in the currently working um, PC. And this is kind of just the first step of the build. Uh, you need to gut the machine, take all the electronics out, it's a little bit sad, but it is what it is, you know? Uh, and so once all that is outside of your machine, you'll sort of be at a crossroads where you need to decide whether you want to fit an ATX motherboard, which is uh, what's in my build, or a micro ATX motherboard into your um, chassis. Now, if you decide to use an ATX motherboard, then you're gonna have to cut um, this plate right here. I can show some extra footage about showing what I did, but it does complicate the build quite a bit, so I guess just keep that in mind. Now that we have that out of the way, so to speak, uh, I guess let's just go through some of the larger scale uh, extra components, which make up this PC. So one of the cooler sort of janky, but also awesome portions of this build is the PSU, which you take a uh, normal standard issue, I guess, PC, <laughs> PSU, and you kind of stick it into the uh, Apple PSU. There's a video in the description which shows you how to do this. And I think there is some concern about whether uh, it'll get enough airflow when it's in the actual uh, case, but so far it hasn't been an issue for me. So I'm just not gonna think about it. I'll, I'll put a comment if my PC explodes, but so far so good. Another aspect is the fans, which are fit into the, I guess, original Mac Pro uh, holdings. I don't know if that's the right term. Uh, yeah, it's very straightforward. You just stick them in. Uh, you might have to cut a little bit of plastic, but it's nothing too crazy. And it's quite nice how they slide into this bottom portion. Oh, okay, we're good. <laughs> Moving on to some of the smaller bits of the build, uh, we have the power button and front I.O., which are, I think, the only original circuitry, I guess, from the Mac Pro that is still in the machine. Now, uh, this front part is the only part of the build, at least for me, that required any amount of soldering. I'll put 
some resources if you want to look into how to do this, but it's actually a pretty simple soldering job. You just have some one pin connectors, which you solder into the power button and you just hook it up to your motherboard and it'll work. Um, yeah. As far as the actual, I guess, front IO, uh, there is a much more graceful way to do it uh, if you're smarter, but uh, I don't have any particular need to use Firewire or whatever the other input is. So I basically just JB welded uh, two uh, USB inputs uh, to the circuit board. I'm, I know this is gonna make someone angry, I'm sorry, but it's what worked for me. And I did eventually learn how to solder, so maybe I'll, I'll get good enough and be mad at myself sometime in the future for doing that. As for uh, another little small bit, which I did as a part of this build, is the SATA um, bays, or it's essentially the slots where you put your hard drives. This is one of my favorite aspects of the Mac Pro. So you'll have a hard drive like this. You'll screw it in uh, to these little, I guess, rails. And you just stick them in. They'll lock into place. You gotta open this for it to slide in. And then they just hook up because the IO, I don't know if that's the right term, on the hard drives aligns with the bays and it just connects up. It's a really nice looking system. But as for what the um, original stock Mac SATA bays look like, they're like this. Um, and I know for a fact that there is a way to solder the actual original, I guess, wires to be compatible with your motherboard. But unfortunately, I'm just not quite there yet in my soldering skills. So what I did is I, I just used JB Weld. I just welded some little uh, holes to a like SATA connector I bought on Amazon and it's so far held up. I haven't had any issues. Let's see, is there anything else to bring up? This front or rear fan is pretty neat. Uh, it fits in quite nice and I think that's just due to uh, the alignment working out well between how I placed my motherboard and just the positioning of the fan which is a very important part of the build I'd make sure to pay attention to. But as you can see, I did some plastic cutting uh, with a Dremel. Basically, all the cuts you see were done with a Dremel for this project. But if you align your motherboard right, uh, hopefully it'll be able to stick into place just like it did for me. And it kind of just stays there. Oh, I have, okay, I have one more thing, which is the optical drive. Now, there is an original one that comes with the PC you buy, obviously, but unfortunately the rear IO it has is quite old and does not have the standard like SATA connections that I'm familiar with. So I just bought a um, random one at this very cool place, by the way. It's called RePC in Seattle. Uh, they have a computer museum. And you know, if you're ever around here, you should definitely check them out. I want to spend a little bit more time talking about the motherboard portion of this mod and I guess to start let's talk about how this motherboard actually ended up fitting into this case. 
the general process is you take the back plate of another PC case, um, cut it out. I used a Dremel and uh, you take that piece and JB weld it onto the um, back of the Apple chassis. Once it dries, obviously, uh, it's quite strong. I was able to lift this entire thing up just holding the cutout uh, once the adhesive had dried. And it's very, very important during this stage that you make sure you align it correctly. Uh, I got <laughs> much luckier than I should have. I think I essentially put it into place and moved it around a little bit. I think you can kind of use your GPU as a reference maybe. Uh, as you can see, it is screwed into place using the original, I don't know the term, housing for the where those kind of components should be. Um, but just, you know, make sure you don't damage your GPU. <laughs> and uh, yeah, best of luck. The last portion of this build I wanted to talk about was the rear I.O. Uh, so if we zoom in a little bit here, you'll obviously be able to see the um, back plate of my motherboard. But in addition to this, there is a little wall lining the space between uh, the outer shell of the chassis and the motherboard. And without this, there would just be blank space there which really doesn't look that good. So I put it in the description. There is a little 3D printed piece you can, uh, I guess, acquire, um, which accomplishes this task. And you'll have to cut this out, uh, word of warning, I guess. So once again, just you know, make sure you're measuring everything correctly. And it uh, could look something like this if you want it to. Thank you.